Hello, and welcome to yet another project where I'm going to be getting in way over my head. So today I'm going to be getting started on my second ever stained glass project, and uh, it's a doozy. So I want to make a scene from Lord of the Rings. The one I'm thinking of in particular is Gandalf and his cart going over Bywater Bridge. So to do that, it means I'm going to have to create a template for the project from scratch. And that means starting out with a sketch, moving on to a large scale drawing, and then breaking that up into what I'm going to have the glass cuts be. This is going to be a lot. Definitely biting off more than I can chew here. Now, hold please while I pull up some reference images and uh, get started sketching. Oh good, you're still here. So my drawing turned into a more pre precise tracing that I did, which I then put on a piece of white paper, took a photo of, and then blew it up in ye old Photoshop to be a nice large template. I tried my best to make all the shapes simple enough that when I cut them, it's not gonna cause a lot of issues. I can definitely alter them as I go if there's some issues, like adding extra um, lines, which means, you know, an, another piece of glass. And I color coded it all in Photoshop. So I'll have that as a reference. Took a while. I guess I didn't really need to show you that part because it was kind of boring. It was just a lot of um, sitting there and redrawing lines over and over again. But I guess I'm ready to start. I'm gonna go ahead and number everything out so that when I'm cutting my pieces, nothing's gonna get confused because there's a hell of a lot of pieces here. Oh no, what have I got myself into? <laughs> and this time I am gonna wear gloves because um, I cut myself a lot of times last time I worked with glass and I'm already starting out with two cuts, haven't even touched glass today. What can I say, I'm accident prone. Time to number out and then get to cutting. That was, that was so lame. I'm sorry. <laughs> Well, I'm back to working on it. I don't have any cuts on my hands from last time and uh, the ones that I had from other things are healed up. So let's hope that today is a blood-free day. So I'm finding that cutting the glass is hard and easy, if that makes sense, um, because the glass is a little bit unpredictable, but I mean, it's it's glass so it breaks easily. Um, yeah, I also got a like grinder, um, not that kind of grinder, but like, you know, a physical grinder. I can get the edges off now so that any of my like weird edges, I can correct those with the grinder. Yeah, and there's like a million pieces. This is gonna take forever. So uh, yeah, I guess I'm gonna get back at it. Okay. This one's really opaque. I'm gonna have a hard time tracing it out and then getting it to the right shape. Shit. I wish I had a light table to work on. Mm. You know, I just realized that I should probably have two copies of this 
so that I can set all of my finished pieces on it. So I'm gonna go print that out real quick. Okay, so I made another whole template. I'm not sure why I didn't do this before. I guess I just didn't realize it was necessary. So with this opaque piece, I think maybe if I use some tracing paper to trace out the shape and then put it on top, maybe I can cut it through that. Um, I know it's gonna like destroy the tracing paper, so I don't think this will work, but I'll try it, whatever. <laughs> There's gotta be an easier way to do these like extreme curves without like winding up with uh, pieces broken off. Am I gonna figure it out this time around? Probably not. I've been watching some videos and TikToks on how to cut glass better and then along with the experience of having done half this thing already. So some tips I've picked up. You definitely want to cut like forwards rather than like towards yourself, which is something I was doing until literally like five minutes ago. Um, I don't know why I didn't put that together, but it is so much easier to cut forward. And then also um, using the back of one of the cutters this little like knob, you can like knock the glass to open it up a little bit more so that when you go to break it, that um, score line is a bit more open. So if you find that you're going to break a piece and it's like not coming apart, doing that will help open up the score line. And then just kind of like working the score line a little bit more so that it doesn't break as um, unpredictably. And I'm also leaving a lot more like hangover areas like I'm not trying to get right up next to my trace lines because I know that I can grind those down that's all I've learned for now I'm gonna keep cutting oh so I was working on this at the dining room table last night and my husband was like aren't you afraid that you're gonna like cut yourself or stab yourself with a glass until I have no fingers left and honestly no for some reason um I don't know if that's just because I'm kind of used to working with it now or if that's a personal thing because um, if you've watched some of my other videos I'm a bit um, I guess you could say cavalier with how I approach some things um, I don't know if that's a feature or a flaw with me but um, yeah I have cut myself several times and gotten little tiny glass splinters on my hands but it's not too bad I mean Whatever, as long as I wash my hands after I'm done with this so that none of it ends up in like my eye or my face, uh, I'm not too worried about it.
am finally done with all the cuts and um, exhausted for some reason. Um, who knew that cutting glass was like a, an exercise? I don't know. Maybe it was just standing on my feet this whole time. I feel like this took forever, like way longer than I thought it would. Okay, so now I need to go in with a grinder and level out all the edges so that everything fits together a lot more snugly than it can now. Everything is like sort of just like this on top of each other right now because like there's a lot of edges that I just couldn't get to because they were too um, complex or like too curved. And it's gonna be such a cluster trying to get all the pieces like back where they're supposed to go. Luckily everything has a number, but like, my God, this is so much, what am I doing? <laughs> okay, well, I don't know how to use the grinder either. So I need to read the instructions and try to figure that out. I can do this. Be right back. The grinding seems to be pretty self-explanatory. The setup was really simple. Um, said to practice on some scrap glass. So that's what I'm gonna do. Always use protection, kids. Yo. So I seem to be really dragging ass in my projects this summer. This time though, it wasn't my fault. My husband had pneumonia, which he's doing okay now, thankfully. Um, but I was basically like with the kids by myself all week and uh, it was a lot. It's like the hardest job in the world. So like give all the moms some credit here. Don't worry, I had a few white claws about it after they went to bed, so that was good. Yeah, so the piece is ready for the last two-ish steps. I went ahead and evened out all the edges to hopefully make it frameable. We'll see. But yeah, so the next step, I need to use foil tape to go around all of the pieces. I read somewhere that apparently you don't have to foil all the tiny pieces because some of the pieces around it that are soldered will be able to hold them in place. I'm gonna test that. I'm not confident that that's gonna work, especially because my like edges are not like super flush everywhere. I'm gonna give you a quick little tutorial, I guess, on how to foil. It's super easy, but it's just very tedious, like every step of this. But I mean, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel and I am loving this so far. Let's do it. Okay, so I'm gonna start with this piece that has a lot of weird shapes in it just to give you kind of a rundown of some of the techniques that you need to use when you have things like a concave edge. Okay, so you start, you wanna put the glass like in the very center of it and then just like wrap it around. Kind of like pressing it down as you go, but you don't wanna press down the edges just yet. Okay, and then when you're doing the concave edge, you just put it on as normal but what you do next to it is gonna be a little bit different. Kind of just like tear off. Put it back around the edge I've already been on. And since this is just a flat edge right here, I'm gonna go ahead and just start to press that down. When it comes to the concave, you need to take like a tool, um, these brandishing tools are really cheap, but like you can use just anything like a, a paintbrush or something too. And um, you really wanna do this to kind of like stretch the foil so that it's not gonna rip when it's laying down along this edge. 
So just like stretching that foil as you go. And then there's all these like weird kind of like bumpies that you don't want to have in your final product. So then that's when you take any end of this really and you just like rub it down and it gets all of the um, weird shapes out of it. And then you have a foiled piece and just need to do that a thousand and one more times. See you in a year or two, I guess. Welcome to soldering. This is the very last step. It's gonna take a while, I think. And there's gonna be a lot to solder here. So um, it's gonna be a good practice. Okay, so the first step in soldering is to use some flux, which I have got this little flux pin. I got safety flux so that it doesn't smoke as much and uh, send off too many bad fumes. Regardless, I have a respirator and some kind of ventilation here. So I need to flux all of the like joints or where the lines come together it it's basically like tacking it all together so that once i am going to be doing all of the lines it's not going to like come apart and just create a huge mess i think what's going to work best for me is like taking the solder off with a soldering iron and then applying it rather than trying to like hold it and do it all together because that was just kind of hard for me to do last time so uh let's get started with the most satisfying part okay <laughs> tomorrow. So my first attempt at soldering started out pretty well, but um, after I did the tacking points and I went through to do all of my lines, I just started having a lot of issues. I just had a really hard time getting a clean line and it would take forever to melt the solder and then once I got it going it would just like stutter and then stop. And I just figured it was my inexperience so I just kept on trucking for like a couple of hours there, but finally I just sort of gave up and started researching like what I need to be doing differently. And it turns out it was my inexperience, but not because of the technique I was using. It was because I didn't really know how soldering irons work. So soldering irons are pretty high maintenance. You can't just turn it on, melt the solder, and put it away when you're done. You have to continuously wipe off the, um, the flux in the solder you're getting on the tip of it and then retinning it so that it maintains its conductiveness and if you don't do that it'll start oxidizing and then you won't be able to melt the solder as effectively and it'll just cause all that sloppiness that I was getting. So I ordered some tip tinner and um, basically every time I'm gonna be like wiping off the excess solder every like 10 minutes or so I'm gonna be dipping it back in to kind of resurface the the tip so that it it means it's like tip top shape. But yeah, otherwise soldering is kind of fun to do, even though I was doing it a crabby job. Like I'm, I'm kind of enjoying this part, so yay. <laughs> okay, I have done a complete solder of the front side. Um, I can go back and fix some of the little things when I'm completely done, which I plan on doing. 
But now I need to clean off all the flux and flip it over and solder the backside. Okay, welcome to the home stretch. So I have this stuff, which is called uh, zinc came, like C-A-M-E, not cane, like I thought it was originally. I'm gonna use this for the framing. You see how there's a channel in here that the glass is gonna go into. And I've already mitered one corner of it, and I just need to finish mitering all the corners. It's pretty uh, soft as far as metal goes, so it's easy to just use like a handsaw, just at that 45 degree angle. And then once I get all that cut and measured, or I guess measured and cut, <laughs> then I need to solder it to the pane by like finishing these lines into this. And part of the soldering is going to be attaching um, like some sort of hook or jump ring situation up here, like in the joint of the, the mitered pieces. And I think I might be using some wire to do that, but um, after that, it's gonna be time to patina it. So, wee. I made that. Turn out exactly like what I pictured when I first drew everything out. And like, I kind of can't believe it. <laughs> I mean, I've always wanted to do something like a big stained glass landscape, whatever. And uh, I don't know, I, I think I doubted that I actually could because it just seemed really daunting. But that's kind of the beauty of crafting is that you can just try a bunch of different things and you learn a lot along the way. Like next time I do something like this, it's gonna be even better. I'm really excited to have this in my kitchen now. <laughs> and it's cool, can't wait to do more. So yeah, it's officially August, which means it's spooky season in my eyes. So um, a few projects are gonna be Halloween related. If you wanna come back and check that out, then uh, subscribe, I guess. <laughs> yeah, see you next time, bye.